गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीबॉडी हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी शल टेक वन क्लास ऑन पार्ट एंड सीपीएम दिस इज द पार्ट ऑफ यूनिट थ्री ऑफ आवर कंस्ट्रक्शन मैनेजमेंट पेपर गिवन इन आवर सिविल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट इन द सेमिस्टर सिक्स प्रोग्राम ए प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन प्लानिंग एंड शेड्यूलिंग इज इन पार्ट एंड सीपीएम इन दिस class we shall discuss some technical terms related to part and cpm and three solutions of three numerical problems and presented by dr rithik chaturvarti lecturer in civil engineering rkm shilpopita belgoria my email id is chaturvarti@gmail.com okay today we shall cover the third unit of construction management paper that is planning and scheduling mainly some technical terms and three numerical problems planning and scheduling techniques first bar chart in our study materials we have already studied different technical terms they are advantage disadvantage we are studying these technical terms swiftly so that we can get overall knowledge on bar chart bar chart basically chart in the rectangular form it may be horizontal or vertical definitely it has some advantages and disadvantages next is network analysis network analysis is the combination of activities and events activities means those which need some resources and it is represented as arrow type arrow head okay and the loads the circular part represents the events it may be the starting event or finishing event and one activity is the combination of load and arrow next is network analysis in our scheduling technique we use network analysis mainly two parts one is cpm and the other is part cpm means critical path method and part is program evolution and review technique definitely critical path method has some advantages and disadvantages and on the other hand part it has also some advantages and disadvantages in our civil engineering or engineering field we mainly use critical path method and we can include this utilization in our cost analysis also next thing is activity in our project which needs some resources is activity critical activity Crit activity may be ordinary activity critical or non critical activity that is ordinary means non critical activity but critical activity which has no slack or float slack or float means looseness when early start time may differ early start time and latest start time this difference if this difference is just the duration of the activity then this will be called as critical activity but when it slacks it has some looseness so we can calculate the float for non critical activities sometimes for our logical sense to complete our network we also use some dummy activity which needs no resources to just link between logical activities to represent in our network analysis next is our critical path critical path is the line through which critical activities will flow and in these activities there is no float or slack next is total float or slack it is the difference between latest finish time and earliest start time let earliest finish time similarly latest start time minus early start time free float and 
total float. Next is the early start time. Early start time indicates so that in the in the well well condition, ideal condition, we can start our activity as early as possible. This is the early start time. As early as possible, this is the early start time. Sometimes for our snack or float, we can we can extend this time and this is called our latest start time latest possible time so that the total project cannot be disturbed this is our latest start time similarly earliest finish time and latest finish time and most likely time in our statistical analysis probabilistic particularly in our part case program evolution and review technique we use most likely time that is tma and pessimistic time optimistic time indicates when the situation is favorable then we can complete our activities smoothly within within a short period of time this is optimistic time for but in the case of natural calamities and difficulties we have to extend we have to delay the activity this is our pessimistic time and this combination is expected time from our next we, we, shall, we shall show the variance and total project cost variance is the variance is the square of standard deviation and it is equal to tp minus to divided by 6 whole square next is total project cost for any project main two divisions of cost one is direct cost and other is indirect cost summation of these two is called total project cost direct cost means which is essential for this particular activity this is called direct cost and indirect cost is the indirect cost is the that particular cost which controls or checks duration of the work financial overhead lost production etc indirectly in our project this is our indirect cost and next is our normal time and normal cost it is the standard or expected time to complete an activity which is called our normal time and the cost corresponding to normal time is called normal cost when we use some other resources extra resources we can crash this duration we can we can reduce the duration of the project so that we have to use some other resources this will be called as crash time and next is our cost slope plus cost slope is ct minus cn divided by tn minus tc that is del c by del t is equal to cost slope this is this is the difference between our cost and time next now two minutes break for our interaction up to that particular technical terms students now our interaction session for the understanding of technical terms if there is any confusion from your side you can ask one by one please okay the man look sir you told us about uh, the project time and the uh, for a particular cost of project, is there any relation between the project time and cost of project? Very good. In the third numerical problem, we shall show the direct relationship about duration and cost. Duration cost relationship. In the third problem, we shall explain. At present, we know that cost is mainly divided into direct cost and indirect cost direct cost which are very very essential for our project or activity and indirect cost controls the duration controls the lost etc etc this is like overhead type of cost in our civil engineering estimate also okay sum up of these two is the total cost of the project or total cost of the activity we can reduce or we can crash this duration definitely cross cost will increase but sometimes we can optimize so that duration 
should be minimum and cost should be minimum. In this way, we can optimize this. In the third problem, I shall explain these these things. Okay, thank you. Any other? Okay, okay. Then I shall go to directly in our numerical problem one by one. Three problems today. We shall describe three problems today on part and CPM. Now we shall start our numerical problem. To start this numerical problem, we know some important relations and presentation style in our part and CPM. Normally, activity can be represented like this. One is starting note, that is starting event, and two is our finishing event or closing event. Okay. And the activity is represented by the symbol A. For this A activity, starting event is 1 and finishing event is 2. And in the above side, in the bracket, we have used EST means early start time and EFT means early finish time. In the T is the duration, expected duration. And next LST is our latest start time or late start time and LFT uh, is our latest finish time. And in our, particularly in our part cases, do we use statistics. So, VT means variance of the particular activity is equal to square of standard deviation. That is TP minus T0 divided by 6 whole square. And these are the, these are the full form of different abbreviations used in our relationships and given in our study map. Okay, next. Expected time in our part, TE is equal to TO plus 4TM plus TP, where TO is optimistic time, TM is most probable time, and TP is pessimistic time, divided by 6, and this is our combination is our expected time. And variance of the entire project. First, in our part case, for our total project, combinations of activities, we have to calculate variance of the entire project first. And it is the sum of the variance of activity along the critical pattern. Then we, have, we can calculate our standard deviation of the total project is equal to root over variance of the entire project. These are the relationships we can use in our part and CPM numerical problems. Now, numerical problem number one. With the following data of activities of a project, a suitable network for programming by CPM. CPM means critical path method. Next, these are the given problem, given data. We have already solved this problem in our class, in the previous class, okay. Now, we shall explain this again. What is this? In our problem, given activities A to G, seven activities are given and predecessor activities means the previous activity corresponding to this. There is no previous activity, predecessor activity of A. So, A is the starting activity or terminal activity. And after G, there is no predecessor, uh, there is no successor activity. So, this is the finishing activity. Successor activity means the after activities co concerned corresponding to their particular activities. And time period for A activity is five, five days. For B activities is six days. And similar way, we have given in our problems, problem number one, we have to, we have to complete our project completion time. We have to calculate our project completion time the critical path and the total float of each activity. This is the given problem in problem number one. First, we have to draw the new, the network, project network first. And we first put the starting event, that is event number one, Pakka. then event number two. We have completed, then we put the name of the event, that is A. Then we have to put our early start time and early finish time as given in our representation style of every activity. 
then we have to put our second activity which which has started from node 2 or even 2 this is our b activity and early start time and early finish time of b activity very good then from 2 it is divided into two activities it is divided branching so this is from 3 there is two branches one is c activity and other is c early start time and finish early finish time is given then d activity also started from the third event third event that is event number three and its early start time and early finish time is given next fourth activity c d fourth activity is over then fifth activity e we have put this activity starting from the fourth event and we have completed early start time and early finish time and here this is merging two activities merge at the event number five from the C activity, it is started from third, third event and finished at fifth event. E activity started from fourth event and finished at the fifth event. Next, F activity, it's early start time and early finish time. Then G activity started from the sixth event and it is the finishing activity. Okay. Now, for our calculation, we have started. We have started, this is our forward technique. We can use our forward technique. First, A activity, A activity, early start time is 0 and early finish time is 5. Okay, from our given problem, given data and conditions. Next, B activity, naturally, early start time should be 5. Pakka, understand? Very good, very good. Then, its duration for the B activity needs 6 days. So, early finish time of B activity will be, what? What is the early finish time of B activity? 5 plus 6 equal to 11. Understand? Okay. Then, branching. D activity and C activity. For C activity, early start time should be 11. As well as, for D activity, early start time should be 11. Pakka? Any confusion? Very good. Okay. Next, duration of C activity. What is the value of duration of C activity is 14. So, early finish time of D activity should be 11 plus 14. So, 25. Similarly, for D activity, what is the early finish time of D activity? Devangan? 11 plus early finish time. Early finish time. 11 plus 8. What is the value? 19. This is given in our network. Next, E activity started from D activity. So, early start time of E activity should be the number 19. Okay. Should I, what is the value of early finish time of E activity? 24. How it can be calculated? Very good. Okay. Now we have merged it here in the fifth event. Fifth event. This is our F activity. What is the value of F activity, please? 25. 25. Very good. Early start time and duration is 9. So early finish time should be? 34. 34. Very good. Next, G activity. What is the value of early start time? And early finish time? 40. This is our forward technique. We have started from our starting activity and we have reached our finishing activity and early finish time. Pakka? Orinam? What is the project completion time then? What? It is 40. Zero should be here. Zero should be here. It is the 40 days. Okay. Then we shall start our backward calculation. Starting from the G activity. Backward calculation. Okay. Then early fi late finish time Late finish time of G activity should be? Nilam 3. What is the value? 40. Okay. Then, Piyanshu, what is the value of early finish time of G activity? 40 minus 6. Vishwajit, then what is the value? 34. 34. Similar way, we can, we can put the 
latest finish time first then latest start time of each activity in the lower part in the lower part in the presentation okay similar we have completed our project completion and this is our network diagram okay then understand any one confusion ranjit any confusion fine okay right then total time period for part here from starting event to finishing event we can go 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 this is one path and other path is 1 2 3 5 6 7 okay these two paths are given and through these two two paths time period required time period we have shown here required time period and what is the largest value of this 40 very good thank you so our project completion time should be 40 then then project completion time one part of this numerical problem 40 days then critical path in this diagram is 1 2 3 5 6 7 and it can be noted by two lines also it can be colored in our exam paper or in our industry or it can be represented by thick line or two lines also okay this is our critical path next is our total float for each activity total float means early finish time minus early start time or late finish time minus early start time okay so in our a case for our activity a this should be float should be 0 minus 0 so it it may be 0 okay or 5 minus 5 so it is also 0 but for float of activity a is 0 for our b devangan what is the value of float for b activity 11 minus 11 so 0 or 5 minus 5 it is also 0 sapir clear okay okay then c for c activities c activities what is the float value 11 minus 11 or 25 minus 25 so it is 0 for d activity they were going again for d activity what is the value of float d activity very good 12 minus 11 is equal to 1 don't know what is the value of our flow for d activity 1 how it can be calculated very good so we can we can calculate our flow for d activity by 12 minus 11 is equal to 1 or 20 minus 19 is equal to 1 pakka this is our d activity float of d activity similarly for our activity e float value is 1 okay then f for f activity float value is 0 and the g also it is 0 in our critical path float value is 0 for each activity for critical activity float value is equal to 0 then okay we have completed our first numerical problem by critical path method now we use part part for our network analysis now question is three time estimates to tm tp of the activities of the project are given below draw the network diagram find the expected duration and variance of each activity calculate offering time for each activity expected duration of the project total flow, flow this should be flow flow of each activity find the variance and standard deviation of the entire project this is our given problem pakka this is our second second problem here to tm tp values are given optimistic time most probable time and pessimistic time are given we can use the relationship for expected time period te expected time period is equal to to plus for tm plus tp divided by 6 we can use this formula and forward each activity here activity is represented by the event 1 2 1 3 2 4 3 4 4 5 3 5 like this <coughs> and we have shown the given given time periods for optimistic pessimistic and most probable time 
Now we use this formula and we can get the expected time for each activity. Next. Now in our case we have calculated our variance for each activity Bt, expected time duration Te for each activity and standard deviation which is root over variance. Okay. And total float is equal to LST minus EST or equal to LFT minus EFT from the given data of our numerical problem, second numerical problem. And accordingly, we have tabulated this value. Next. Total float of each activity is given in the last column. Next. We have drawn this particular network diagram. This is our starting event. Then one two is our activity A and similarly duration expected time duration which is calculated from TE formula TE is equal to TO plus 4TM plus TP divided by 6 this formula we have put this value for A it is 6 and in the similar way we have completed our early start time and early finish time 0, 0,6 okay Devangan what is the early finish time value of A activity Finish time. Very good. Six. Then we have completed A activity in the for forward calculation. Now we start for B activity. This is 0 and 12. Paka. Because 12 is the duration of the B activity, expected time period. Next, from starting event 2, this is our C activity. Okay. This is Early start time and early finish time for C activity is 6 and 19. Then from 3, even 3, D activity, expected time duration is 5. And early start time of D activity should be 12 because early finish time of B activity is 12. So early start time of B activity is 12 and duration is 5, expected time period is 5. So early finish time. Okay, next. E activity 19 and 23. From E activity, E activity, the predecessor activity is C and D. And early finish time of C is 19. And early finish time of D is 17. What is the value of early start time of E? The number? 19 the higher value because we have to complete the previous activities previous all activities we have to complete it so the higher value e19 comma 23 for if <coughs> oh, sorry 12 and 28 and it is merged in the fifth event and fifth event is the closing event of the total project so what is the value of arinam what is the value of project completion time 20 days, very good. The project completion time is 20 days. Now, in the similar way, we can continue our backward calculation from last activity, say from F activity, then E activity, then D activity, then C activity, okay, then B activity, okay, then last A activity. We have completed our network diagram using part method part means program evolution and review technique okay any confusion any confusion okay now in the conclusion side we have drawn this network by part method this is our project completion time first we have completed our forward technique method then we have completed our backward technique method and we put all the early start time, early finish time, late start time, late finish time and expected duration. Okay. This is our network diagram using variance, using part method. Next is our variance and standard deviation of the entire project is 9 plus 16 only because 9 and 16 is the variance for B activity is 9 and its float value is 0. So it is critical activity. 
float value is zero is the is for critical activity. So we have to add nine. Next only sixteen. That is for F activity. B activity and F activity only the critical activity in this network. Okay. So we have to add the variance value of B activity and F activity. That is nine plus sixteen. Proceed. Then variance total. For entire project, sum of the variance of the activity along the critical path only that is nine plus sixteen, so it is twenty-five. So standard deviation of the entire project is root over variance of the entire project that is root over twenty-five. So it is five. Five days is the variance of the entire project, and twenty-five days is the Vari uh, standard deviation of the entire project is five, and variance of the entire project is twenty-five. Okay, then we shall go our last problem in our today's class. The following table gives the information about various activities as shown below. Next. Okay, here are activity two activities given. One two is one activity. Two three is other activity. Normal duration as per our available resources, we can complete the activity for first activity one two in nine days, and for second activity we can complete this within five days in normal condition. So it will be called as normal duration. Paka, and if if we can supply some other resources, we can complete these activities. Within a short period of time, say, within a short period of time, say six days and three days for the corresponding activities are called as crash activity. This nine days work we can complete within six days. Paka, and for our second activity, five days work we can complete in our three days. Clear? For every student, it is clear. Question is clear. In our given conditions, normal duration is given. Only two activities are given: one, two, and two, three. Two activities are given. Normal duration is nine and five days, and normal cost is eight <coughs> thousand. For our nine days, normal cost is nine thousand for that first activity, and five thousand for the second activity. Clear? If we You have some other resources, additional resources. Then we can crash our duration from nine days to six days. So it is our our cost will go upward, will increase, and its cost may be nine thousand five hundred. Okay, and for the five days work, we can use additional resources and we can complete our work in three days. And crash cost may be. Five thousand five hundred. Paka, it is clear to all. Question is clear for everybody. Okay. Next, project overhead costs are at the rate of rupees three hundred per day. These are the top given top information is for direct cost, and overhead cost is the indirect cost, as explained earlier. Okay. Next, we have to determine direct cost duration relationship. Total cost duration relationship and the corresponding least cost plan network. Two things we have to develop: direct cost duration relationship and total cost duration relationship, and the corresponding least cost. These three parts should be given. We have to we have to calculate or we have to analyze this. Now solution: only two activities, one, two, and two, three. So this is our network diagram. This is our network diagram. Say A is the first activity. Okay, nine is the normal duration, and within bracket six is the crash duration. But the representation is clear. Second activity, second activity is B activity, and its normal duration is five, and crash duration is three. Clear. So this is our project. Total project it consists of two activities, A and B. Normal duration, crash duration. B activity, normal duration, crash duration. This is our network diagram. Then, 
Now, we have calculated our cost slope. Cost slope means del C divided by del T. That is increase in cost due to decrease in time. This is our cost slope. Okay, next. This is our first step. And we have calculated the cost slope. Del C and del T value for A activity and for our B activity. Okay, that is activity 1, 2 and activity 2, 3. Del then this is our 9 and 6. So, so this should be 3. Del, C, del, del T should be 3. And this is our normal cost minus crash cost. Difference of these is 500 for A activity. So del C is 500 and del T is 3. And for the second activity, this should be 500. Del C should be 500 also. And del T should be 2. Next. Okay. The normal duration for the project should be 9 plus 5. Normal duration of first, pro first activity is 9. And second activity is 5. So total normal duration for the whole project is 9 plus 5. That is 14 days. Okay. And normal cost. That is normal direct cost. Should be 8,000 plus 5,000, that is 13,000. Pakka, clear, next, next step. Then, activity 2, 3 can be, can be, we have to, we have to calculate the slope first. And the least value of the slope, we can continue. We can continue, but we can start from the least value of the cost slope. Now, first, we cast the, activities by their corresponding crash durations. Durations by which the two, three can be crashed two days. First, we have crashed the second activity for two days. Okay. And due to this, the extra cost for these two days should be rupees 500. Then project cost should be, project duration should be nine plus, crash duration is five minus two. So three, nine plus three is our 12 days in this case and due to this total project cost is 13,500 13, okay then after having full cast of, of the second activity activity 2 3 let's let us cast activity first activity 1 2 from its normal duration of 9 days to its cast duration of 6 days and therefore Del T is equal to 9 minus 6 for so 3 days and the extra cost for crashing is 3 into 500. That is, that is 1500 is the extra cost. So our project duration is 6 plus 3, 9 should be 6 and crash duration of the second activity is 3. So total crash duration is 9. Direct cost for 9 days project is 13,500 plus again 1,500. So it is 15,000. The corresponding network with all the activities crashed. All the activities are crashed. First, second activity is crashed. Then, first activity is crashed. Okay. Next is our total cost of the project. The total cost of the project for any duration is obtained by adding the indirect cost overhead to the corresponding direct cost. The optimum duration of the project is 12 days and minimum cost corresponding to it is rupees 17,100. It is given in our following table. Table C. Okay. For 40 days normal duration, direct cost should be 13,000. Pakka. Clear. Indirect cost for 40 days into at the rate 300. So it should be 4,200. Okay. And total cost for the project is 17,200. For 14 days normal duration period, for this particular project consisting of two activities, it needs 17,200 for 14 days. Pakka, clear? Everybody clear? Now we have crashed for 12 days. First, we have crashed our second activity. That is five days to two days. Okay, so our 12 days, 5 days, 2, 3 days. <coughs> so our 
12 days duration, the total direct cost should be 30,500 as explained earlier. And for 12 days, into 300 per day indirect cost, so it is 3,600 and total 17,100. Okay. For all, all activities, for the activities 1 and 2, <coughs> both activities are closed and for 9 days work, our direct cost should be 15,000, then indirect cost should be 2,700 for 9 days and total cost should be 17,700. In our optimum case, this is our optimum case which is given in our YOLO shaded data. Okay, so our optimum project duration is 12 days and corresponding to it, total cost of the project is the minimum and its value is 17,100. And next. And this is given in our graphical form. Okay. Lower part is indirect cost at the rate of 300 per day. Okay. For, for 9 days, etc., etc., for different days, it is given in our coordinate. We are co continue this curve. We have come to this is the two line segment for each curve. Next is our direct cost. This is our relationship. They were not clear. And this is our total indirect plus direct. So it is our total cost curve. X axis is our duration and Y axis is our cost. And the minimum cost of the total project as for optimization or uh, using this network technique and it is 17,100. Okay, next. This is our conclusions. From this class, we have studied some technical terms in part and CPM and three important numerical problems using part and CPM. It is in our third unit of construction management paper and it is also useful for our construction, uh, for our economics and project management paper and we can use this knowledge in our industry also. This is our conclusion. Next, references. First one is my book, Industrial Management Bengali version, Silva Publications, given by me, written by me. Next one is Punmiya B and Kandelwal, Project Planning and Control with Part and CPM. Third one is our source book, from Jadavpur University, Professor Shengupta and Professor Guo, Construction Management and Planning, Magro Hill, Education and India Private Limited and others. Informations are collected from Google Dr. Dutton. Next. Thank you.